don't know how to describe it. Being here at night, with the moon, the mountains, they make you feel so small sometimes. That's a very unique feeling. This is the first expedition we are doing in winter, so let's see what happens. Just before snowing, there's a moment absolutely peaceful and quiet. It's a privilege to be just in that moment, but we have to remember the mountain is it's dangerous. To go to the mountain is to learn to be honest with ourselves. It's not about thoughts, it's about feelings. To feel we belong to something bigger than us. When you look at a landscape, and you don't see anything. But there are lots of things happening that are hidden to us. And that's my objective, this is my, my job. Yeah. Trying to understand all this. But new generations will not see the Pyrenees that we see now. Climate change is having a huge impact on mountains. To understand how global change will impact many mountains in the world, we need long-term data. And this is only possible with EarthWatch. Fieldwork is challenging, especially in extreme environments like this. You can be in your lab doing your computer models, but you need real field data. These data are gold. They come from the reality. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready to go out and be in the real world. Running up the mountain, can you see them? It, it's like two wild goats. They are running up the mountain. Chamois is an alpine species, so it's always been at the highest elevations, but we are starting to see chamois everywhere. And that's because there's no control. No wolves, nothing that hangs on them. Those animals are crazy. They stay at the top of the mountains during winter. They're herbivores, they just eat. Plants? Yeah. yeah. And humans. And humans. <laughs> <laughs>
The Pyrenees are a mountain range that at the north they have France and on the south they have Spain on the left side and Catalonia on the right side. And at the north of Catalonia there's this tiny country named Andorra. And it is in Andorra where this research takes place. We are measuring several things. We are measuring the composition rate of the soil. We have nest boxes. We band birds. We have camera traps. And we also measure the growth of trees. We have high and low elevation plots because elevation and so temperature is one of the most important factors that affect the biology of most of the species that live here. This is a crossbill. So they open the beak, put it inside the pine cone, and then close the beak. And they smash the pine cone. There are a lot of birds around that I didn't expect to be here. So, well, surprising. <laughs> All these landscapes have suffered changes a lot, but the changes have been extremely slower than now, and species have been able to adapt. All species are extremely linked one to each other. So one small effect on one species may have a cascading effect on others. This is the only project in Andorra that deals with the whole community. We'll probably have snow in two or three hours. So that's why we are gonna set up the camp here to be sure that we can at least get some data today from the birds and the insects. This is a nice net. The birds will fly to the tree where the bird noises are and then hopefully they'll hit the net on their way. There was a group of birds around, so that means that it's a good place. The nets are quite invisible when they are open and they are not flat, they have like backs. So when the birds are flying the net, they get tangled. But they're super cold, so they can freeze. We need to check all the time, because we don't want a, a frozen bird. To protect the bird. <laughs> okay. We need to tie one of the ropes to that tree, and another one to this tree. Make like a V. Okay. If you want to bring birds, you need a special license. And oh, to really? get the license, you need to pass a test. And you need to install the nets all alone, by yourself. So tomorrow, we'll do this by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. It kind of puts you on edge. Because you look up and see clouds coming over the mountains. And it's like, God, we're like three hours away from camp. Birds in the alpine environments are one of the most abundant vertebrate species. Their life cycle is linked a lot to the temperatures, and changing in the temperatures may be reflected in changes in their reproduction rates and growth rates. They are the indicators of global warming. Do you get that? Are you okay? That's the second time I've done that today. That's part of the experiment. Gravity works here. So we install the nets and we play the uh, bird's call. And uh, let's see. Ah, they are responding. Okay, they are somewhere around. Ah, that's a gold Good. <laughs> it's so Christmas, we're... so we're asking the tree for <laughs> presents. <laughs> for Christmas, uh, kids beat on a trunk. So the trunk will give presents to the kids. It will poop out presents. Yeah, it will poop out presents. Yeah. We have a song for that and stuff. But now we're not doing this. <laughs> well, actually, there could be that our presents could be the insects we're trying to catch. <laughs> Classic Catalonian culture, yeah. Christmas is here. Beetles fall from trees. We look for them, if you please. We are trapping insects because they are the main diet of the birds we are bending. All right. This is leave me alone. Yeah. It's so small, a bird would eat that. Two. <laughs> Two. Wow. Oh, see, that spider's awake. Oh my gosh, look, he's beautiful. Really? Or she. Oh, there's another one here. Oh, oh yeah. Good, oh, fine. Come on. Should I suck it? Go Should ahead. I suck this one? 
these birds do not capture the insects that fly, but the ones that are in the branches. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Should I get it? Oh yeah, but look at that. What is it? Oh, weird, it's new. It's a beetle. Yeah. Or no, maybe not a beetle, it's weird. We should look at it yeah, back at the place. Yeah. Should I take it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Bye bye. Really productive this one, eh? I think it's the warmth of the sun on this. First expedition, we don't know if it's normal or not. The next days we can sample, we'll see <laughs> which is the normal uh, value we get. Some poor bird's gonna come eat at this tree and hey. find nothing. Yeah. This is my buffet. <laughs> I was saving those for later. We just caught a male coal tit in the net. Just flew in. We moved the speaker to a lower tree and the bird followed it. And it's in this bag. Moving around. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if it hops. Now we are going to process it. First thing we have to do always is identify the species. Different birds, different size of the leg, different ring. Okay? We, we, don't, we don't want the ring to be too tight or too loose. Okay? This species is a cold tit. This species is very feisty. The second thing I have to do always is to put the ring on the leg because in case it escapes, at least it has the ring. This is super small and we use a special pliers, okay, with holes. So when I press the pliers, they never smash the bird's leg. So let's measure it, okay? So we put the shoulder on the top, okay? We smash a little the wing, okay? And then we measure the length. So this one is uh, 65.5. Then we measure the, the longest primary feather. And usually it's always the, the third one, okay? So we always measure the third one. So this is number one, number two, number three. Put the ruler here, in the middle. This is 51. Okay, we put the ruler inside a little bit, and the same. This is a 49. That's tarsus? No, this is a tail, sorry, tail. No half tail? No. Ah, okay. Bernard doesn't want tail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are going to look at the fat accumulation. So for that, I blow the chest feathers. And then we see uh, the, the, mass, the fat accumulation is under the throat and in between the legs. Uh, let's go first with the, with the throat. This yellowish color yeah. is fat. And then let's see under the legs. Not a lot. We are seeing this. Yeah. The, the, these uh, gray lines are the um, intestines. Okay. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah. So it's a fat number two. Okay. That's quite good, but uh, I think it's too cold for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, muscle two. So uh -huh. two, two. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you now the way. So for that, we put it inside here, this funnel. Okay, 9.3. And for the age, we need to look at uh, the different coloration of the feathers. If I open the wing, all the wing is perfectly super nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot see different coloration like uh, gray or brown. There is no any brown. And as you can see, all the flight feathers has this, um, this uh, gray line yep. the, uh, at the edge. Yep. Okay? That means this one is an adult. Okay? So it wasn't born last year. So the age code is six. The best day for us here in the mountains was around 20 birds, but we usually capture around five. We are pretty high, so the abundance is low. So when you open your fingers, they still have the feeling that they are uh, trapped. Oh. But it's because they are holding their own claws together. But then they, they realize and they, they just fly. There are a lot of ringers that bring 
in low elevation places, but there are no ringers crazy enough <laughs> to carry all the stuff up the mountains. So I think the data we are collecting is really important because it's very unknown. When you're looking for bugs on the sheet, your whole world is just this tiny little space. Like one inch square. <laughs> yeah, and then you look up at the mountains, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> I've been so focused for so long. I forgot how big the world is. Weather is our best friend and our worst enemy. There are some things that we can do, rain or shine, but others are impossible if it snows. In this project, we have 12 sites, and in each site, we have five camera traps. Camera traps are one of the best tools to assess the presence of large vertebrates. Rain. Oh, oh. that's a bore. Yeah. 52. Yes, we got a bore. We got a bore over here. There's a cassette that's super recent. We find deer, chamois, wild boar, foxes. When we are trying to study one specific species, they are helping us to understand bigger things that are happening around us. And the range of pictures is between uh, 200 and 2,000, 3,000 per camera. Now it's the best moment, evening. I mean, when after sunset, so it's the it's the perfect time now. Maybe not the perfect weather. Perfect time. Some people say that they have heard or seen borealis, but nobody has ever thought it seriously. Which what's we are trying to do. Boreal owl is the top nocturnal predator species here for the birds. And it's a very important species, what we call a keystone species. Keystone species is a species that has an importance that's not proportional to their abundance because of this control on small mammals. wild boar trail over there that cross uh, on the top of the waterfall. You are here in these conditions, we are with nature. Hostile, but absolutely beautiful and inspirational to share all the experiences with the people the best job in the world. Let's try to locate our boreal owl territory Citizen science is the bridge between the science and the society, which have for many years been living worlds apart. And without Earthwatch and without Earthwatch volunteers, this project would not exist. Most of the research that is done 
now in extreme environments like this is extremely important for policy all around the world. New generations will not see the Pyrenees that we see now, but I think that the magic of mountains will not disappear.